Hey there everyone, this is Odessa Kyleman with eXp Realty. And I'm Brandi Pausek with Bison Ventures. We are here to give you a market update for the general Phoenix market for December 2022. And we are talking about Metropolitan Phoenix and these numbers we actually just completed listening to an hour and a half long presentation, but we're going to shorten it. It's not going to be an hour and a half for you. You don't want to hear that much. But uh, here we go. So we've got 10 points that we wanted to share with you. And the first one is about interest rates. Randy. Um, so we are seeing uh, inflation come down, which is also good for mortgage interest rates. We actually just had uh, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, speaking. He's still speaking as we uh, record this. And they raised the federal fund rate today by 50 basis points or half a percent, which is what we expected. That didn't really do anything to the mortgage market. Actually, we're up a little bit today, which is good because when the Fed raises the interest rate, Fed funds rate, that uh, is saying that they are still fighting inflation and fl inflation is the enemy of mortgage rates. So we are seeing improvements, which is very exciting for us. That's great news. That's great news. So I was looking at the numbers and I think it said that um, we're trending to potentially hit that target rate by May mm -hmm. and that there have been three rate decreases actually since September where we peaked? Um, well, we peaked in November on um, interest rate wise, if you okay. look at interest rates, um, but we're probably seeing the end of the Fed hiking rates higher than they had been in the past. So we okay. saw three interest rate increases of 75%, actually four, and now they're doing just 50 basis points or 0.5% increase. Okay. They did say they are expecting to do another increase. They may stop after that. So uh, things will, time will tell. As housing catches up with the rest of the inflation reports, which we expect to start in January, then um, further improvement is expected. And the Fed is also commenting that they're seeing those things too. Fantastic. Well, on to some other things related to where the market's going, the seasonality. So typically in Arizona, although right now is when our weather is great and our tourist season starts, this is our slow season for selling homes. So there are less homes coming on the market and there are less homes going under contract. So we typically see that in the last two weeks of December, and on the first two weeks of January, it's just kind of slow. Just think of your corporate offices where everyone's away on vacation. It's kind of the same thing in the housing market. Everything just slows down. However, by week six of 2023, the projections are showing that we'll be back up to our normal high season ratio. So that means things are gonna be coming on the market faster. They're gonna be selling faster. The market itself is just going to become more active. So, that's going to coincide, it sounds like, mm -hmm. with the potential decreases in rates. So we might yeah. have them both come together yep. to kind of really reverse this trend that we've seen where buyers have more and more power in this market. If those things mm -hmm. do come together, the rates, the seasonality, you're going to start to see a good amount of availability of homes, but also more competition for those homes. Nothing like what we had before. <laughs> right. No, we're not expecting that at all. But um, on that note, with the rates coming down since November, we have seen an uptick in mortgage applications too. So we're seeing buyers get prepared to buy once they, we see the uh, seasonal downturn that we usually see. Right. So um, we're going to have some more prepared buyers going into the market because they are starting to increase their applications. Good to know. Good to know. So interesting how interest rates affect prices so much. Uh, one of the stats that we saw today was that if you're buying a house today at about $415,000 as a purchase price, your mortgage payment is actually the same as if you would have bought a house in May, but paid $469,000. So what's happened is, is our payments, what people are buying homes and paying their monthly mortgage is stable since May even though the purchase price is actually down about $40,000 or about 10%. So that is kind of point two. So point one was about interest rates. Mm -hmm. Point two is seasonality. Point three is payment versus price. Um, point four is about foreclosures. So tell me about, is it easy to get a loan now and how does that affect foreclosures? 
Um, well, we are in a tighter mortgage guideline market, kind of like where we were in 2010. So it's not easy to get a mortgage, but it's also not hard if you, um, you know, can afford the payment and whatnot. So right. um, we are looking at affordability and the ability to repay now. So people are really having to prove that they can pay. Yes. And that's also why what we're seeing is foreclosure rates are very low mm -hmm. and also stable. People are not giving up their homes and giving them back to the bank okay. because one, they can afford them. And two, most homeowners, because they've owned their home for more than two years, still have a really good amount of equity. And down payment is required just about in every situation now. So there you go. No, no, no more, more zero down. No more zero down unless you're a veteran. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you. Okay, so point five is who is buying? So in 2021, we did see an increase and, and even through 2020, so the past two years or so, we saw an increase in the percentage of homes that are being purchased by investors and people who are buying second homes. Now come to current rates and ratios, it's actually back to normal. So we're seeing, we're still seeing some investor buys, some people buying second homes, but it's right where we have been erase the past two years and then go back another five years. And we're averaging about 74% of homes are being purchased as primary homes. And that's about where we are again. Now there is one very large investor out there right now. This is point number six uh, called open door. So you've seen their billboards, you've seen their ads, and they have purchased over the past few years, a ton of homes so much that they have 1,400 homes for sale on the market right now. And they've only accepted offers on 280 homes. So on average, if we figure it takes about 30 days to buy a home, sometimes 45, it's going to take them five months to sell all of that inventory. And so I mentioned open door. So they are an eye buyer. We call them that because they are an internet buyer. They are an institutional buyer. They buy homes with the intent of reselling them pretty much right away for a profit. And Phoenix has always been a really hot market for that. We're one of the top markets when we travel around the country and go to the Inman Conference in New York and different areas. And we talk about how much Open Door and Zillow and OfferPad buy homes here in Arizona. It dwarfs the rest of the country. So we have a lot of experience with them here and Open Door completely overbought. So if you're a buyer, would not shy away from open door homes. They're giving quite a few discounts and concessions right now. So it takes them about five months at the rate they're going to sell a house. But for a normal seller that's going on the market and trying to sell their house, it's only taking about two to three months. So open doors having to hold those a lot longer, which is bad for their financials. All right, so point seven is talking about rentals. And if you're buying rentals aren't a big deal, but what's interesting to know is the availability of rentals has gone up drastically, but it has been leveling since October. And so has the price. So the price right now, if you're going out to rent a home, medium price is flat year over year. It did peak in May and it's back down to where it was in December of 2021. I always forget what year it is, right? It's crazy. <laughs> okay. So one of the factors that we use to understand how things are trending is called contract ratio. And all we do is we take the number of homes available for sale versus the number of homes that are currently in escrow or under contract. And that number actually has been gliding since July. So if you remember in the spring, we had that frenzy of a market. Things mm -hmm. were going really, really fast. We had more homes under contract with accepted offers than we did available, which is why buyers were having to act very fast. Well, it dropped down drastically from May to July, and then it kind of started to taper off. And since October, it's been relatively flat, which is good because it shows us that the market is stabilizing. We're not having big changes. So for December, this number is actually pretty normal. Mm -hmm. We have a normal percentage of homes under contract versus available. If we look at, again, 2021 was definitely a normal year, but we look at 2019 and prior and we're there. Now, if we look at that seasonally, that means in January, again, we talked about at the beginning of the video that it's gonna start picking up. Mm -hmm. All right, point nine, supply is dropping a little bit faster than demand. So sellers are just deciding they're gonna hold off and they're not gonna sell. 
So the leading indicators say we're stabilizing because they're both dropping with supply dropping a little faster. Therefore, we're coming back towards level. And this trend, even though very small, is showing us that the buyer's market is currently shrinking. So it's not by a lot, but that favoritism towards buyers over sellers that we have right now is slowing down. We do have one exception to that in actually the city of Cape Creek mm -hmm. up north here. It's still a seller's market because we have more homes under contract than we do have available to sell. So the stats show point 10 and the final point is that supply and demand are dancing pretty close to each other. So we're not seeing any signs of a crash, but we have seemed to achieve a slow stabilization with still a slight downward trend and that's why we're calling this a market correction and not a market crash. Now, of course, we don't know what's gonna happen. We've, we've all learned that over the past few years, but the thing to understand when you read the headlines is even if home prices stay flat for the next six months, you're actually going to continue to see headlines saying that inflation is going down. That's because when we're looking at a home price now and we're looking at a year ago, we're looking at December. When we look at a house in February, we're looking at it versus February. And February, we were still going up. So again, the market's softening. We're not seeing that it's plummeting. And a couple interesting things, just in closing remarks, is that the median days on market for a seller in Metropolitan Phoenix is 49 days. So on average, it's taking 49 days, or typically, I'll say it's taking 49 days from the time they put the home on the market until the time they accept an offer. And those offers that are getting accepted are about 3.2% under list price. Some homes are getting full price, some are going less, but 3.2 is kind of where we're seeing most of the homes come in. And then on top of it, we're seeing about half of those homes with concessions. And the median concession amount is $9,370. So for buyers, that means the houses that are there on the market, there's a good chance that you can get them for three and a half percent under list price. And you can potentially get the seller to contribute about $9,000 towards your closing costs. And that's great for interest rate buy downs to get you into the house with a lower payment. Absolutely. So that is the December update. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, for more videos like this and for our information, we do a lot of home tours, things like that. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone else that may be interested. Thanks so much and uh, hope to see you again.